hearings and uh, you know and, and what was going on with censorship and things like that. And uh, when I went to you know before Congress and I and I talked to them. I, you know, I told them that I didn't do drugs, I didn't drink, uh, I was married, uh, a kid, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, I got, and I was actually, and one of the senators said, oh, uh, it sounds like you're in the, you, you, uh, you know, you're a priest or something like that. Uh, and, uh, I said, you know, and I said, yeah, I got one bad habit, I like to rock and roll. I didn't say that there, but, um, you know, uh, it just led me to making that statement, uh, and making that, uh, commentary on people's, people's judgment of me because, you know, there was at that point fans felt I wasn't a true rocker because I wasn't stumbling around like a fucking mindless idiot, uh, wasted and uh, pathetic. Right. So, uh, I have a one bad habit. Anything? Yes, it is. Uh, we don't make her tell me what song it is because we don't make her. Reason to kill? Nope, nope. Should I keep going and play a little bit more? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. The love of dreams, things out all they see. play a little bit more. Yeah, please. Okay. I've heard for okay. a while. Okay. Every prison's not a cage. And I've learned one thing for sure. Ooh. All things must change. Very good. All things must change. Uh, yeah, sadly, you know, my, my post-twisted stuff was uh, tended to be the word ill-fated. Uh, reflects just what's going on in my life, and you know, had gone from being this you know rich, famous rock star to being a poor, famous rock star, <laughs> and uh, and and discovering that the music, the, the music that I, the style of music that I had studied, uh, you know, and perfected, was no people were no longer interested in hearing it, yeah. and. Uh, so you know, my my father once said to me, "The only thing that's the only thing that is constant is change." Sure. Beautiful. And uh, so that you know that phrase so stuck in my head, and all things was but change uh, came to be. <laughs> Desperado. Yep. Very good. I know that one really well because I recorded it with Widowmaker too. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, calling for you, you know, um, uh, it was um, dur during the height of my, you know, uh, mania uh, and my megalomania is a better word, uh, <laughs> where you suddenly become successful and you suddenly feel completely vindicated and you you just become kind of power crazy and uh, and you're just surrounded by people who are kissing your ass and yes, man. Uh, there was only one voice in in my world that was saying no to me, uh, and that is my wife Suzette. Okay. Um, and at that point, where you've now become so full of yourself that you think you can do no wrong, I'm talking about the height of Twisted Sister. Um, you don't want to hear anybody say no to you. Yeah. And my wife is not one who ever puts up with any shit. She's my biggest fan, but my harshest critic. <laughs> okay. And we nearly uh, we nearly broke up. Uh, fortunately, we didn't, and we're still together 40 years later. Uh, but, um, and, uh, you know, and that would have been the biggest mistake of my life. Uh, but that song was right, written based, uh, it was, uh, we were back together by that point, but um, it was still based on the moment where I realized that, you know, I made a terrible mistake, and uh, I was pushing away the only person who actually really loved me and really was there for me through thick and thin, no matter what. And uh, it was reflecting on a moment, you know, calling for you, uh, reflecting on a moment of trying to reach out to her and convince her that, you know, I've seen the error of my ways, and, uh, you know, she was the one I had to have the back in my life. <laughs> Don't know. It sounds like Bernie on guitar. 
guitar, though. Okay, I'm going to keep playing. You ready? Here we go. Yeah. It's not. I'll, I'll play a little bit more. All right. Here okay, go. Okay. I'm now starting to recognize it, but I'm still not knowing the song. <laughs> Do you know what band it is? Um. Now I'm starting to think it's twisted. It is twisted. I stumped you? Uh, well, I mean, I'd have to hear the chorus to know. <laughs> I can re I recognize uh, the melody, but I don't know where it's going. What if I give you the record? <laughs> what is it? Can I give you the record? Will that help? Yeah, well, go ahead. Come out and play? Oh, shit. Uh, um, not looking out for number one. Is it, it is. It is. I was looking out for number one. Yep. Okay. <laughs> there you go. So it sound, really sounds distorted. I'm like, wow, that's really raw sounding. Yeah. Um, you know, looking out for number one, uh, you know, uh, is again in the vein of, uh, not again, but, you know, I had a certain message, I had a certain, uh, I still do, and my new music, which I thought this was going to be about, by the way, because uh, I'm all about my new album, and here I am just yeah. listening to old fucking songs that I'm trying to say, okay, that was then, this is now, I'm Dee Snyder, and, uh, and Twisted mm -hmm. Sister was 30 fucking years ago. I've always had the same message, and that's brought me to We Are The Ones. And the message on We Are The Ones, it's stand up for yourself, believe in yourself, fight for what you believe in, don't take any shit from anybody. And Looking Out For Number One was not the selfish song that some people thought it was. It was just, you know, it was it was the same basic, it was the we're not going to take, it was another we're not going to take it, just with, a, with an odd title. With the SMFs, with the uh, solo record, but that was the so that was the solo record. That was your solo record. Never let the band. Never let the band. It's a desperado go. song uh, that we that Bernie and I wrote, and then I uh, did was an outtake, which was what Never Let the Bass is where you down was was a complete was just someone gave me money to use all Twisted, Widowmaker, and Desperado outtakes and put and do a record with them, uh, and they offered me so much money I couldn't refuse. Okay. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, uh huh. That was actually, actually um, that was actually at the time bands on uh, late '80s. A lot of them were completely ripping off Led Zeppelin, and they were basically just uh, even White, you know, White yeah. Kingdom Come was the biggest cul culprit. And it was like, and people were, were just doing Led Zeppelin songs and like getting recognized for them and applauded for them. Sure. And it was like, well. Fuck, I can do a Led Zeppelin song. Right. You know, and, and um, the one that, it starts out with that Elvis Presley uh, spoof on there yeah. uh, at the beginning. But, uh, you know, the Elvis is a huge Led Zeppelin influence, uh, for especially for Robert Plant. He had a lot of that. Uh, he was a big fan of the 50s. Um, so, uh, yeah, that was uh, me and Bernie just saying, okay, you know, you want a you you Led Zeppelin-esque song, we could do one too. <laughs> 